In this video, we'll go into the shapes of grasp autonomous equations and how we can use our normal derivative calculus again to figure what the shape's gonna look like and know better how to sketch the graph of these solutions. So we can tell from just stability analysis and the basic setup where the graphs are gonna go in terms of trajectory as time goes on. We want a little bit more about the actual shape of the graph to know how we're supposed to sketch this curve out to best fit the problem. So to get to the shape, we wanna look at concavity or the second derivative of our solution. So I want to look at d squared y dt squared, where y is a solution to dy dt is f of y. Well, now I can just write this derivative out by taking the derivative of the derivative and see what happens. So this is the same thing as the derivative in t of dy dt, but that's just f of f of y. But now y is a function of t, so I can work out this derivative, but it has to be done by the chain rule. This will give me f prime of y times dy dt, but again, dy dt is just f. So what this says is that the solution curve is concave up whenever this product here is positive, which means that f and f have the same sign, and it's concave down when they have opposite signs. Now if we look at a graph of a function f, and set up in this context, we can see what that's gonna mean for our solution. So let's say I have a graph, and that looks something like this. We again see equilibrium solutions here, here, and here. And by our stability analysis, this has a positive slope, negative slope, positive slope. The middle here will be asymptotically stable, the other two will be unstable. But now, what about concavity and actually sketching the graphs here? So I want to determine where f and f prime has to have the same sign. We know that f changes sign at these equilibrium solutions, so we'll leave that for now. Where does f prime change sign? Well, it changes sign at critical points. So up here and down here are the two on this graph here. Let's draw some lines and split this uh, graph into regions. Let's mark some concavity things in pink here. So in this lower segment down here at the very, very bottom, we have that f is negative and f is increasing. So f is negative, the derivative is positive, therefore we'll have concave down here. Next segment, we see f is increasing and positive. That's the same sign, so that's concave up. Between the purple and the orange next to it on the right, we see positive and decreasing. So f is positive, f prime is negative, concave down. Below here, we have f negative and decreasing. So that's gonna be the same sign. They're both negative, so concave up, concave down here, and then positive increasing, so concave up on the last bit. Now let's sketch out our phase line and then some actual trajectories for this solution here. So if I draw a phase line over here, we'll have our three equilibrium solutions. And we know from the basic principles, we have down, up, down, and up for our different directions based on the sign of f. But now we also have these critical points that I'm gonna mark in here. They might not be in the center, but they'll be somewhere in between these different uh, equal solutions here. And that's where concavity is gonna switch. So now if we were to start drawing actual trajectories here on an axis, we know we have our equal solutions that give us horizontal lines here, here, and here. If we start below down here, we're decreasing and we're concave down. This is just gonna take off downward in that direction. Now between the two, we have this line here where once we cross that line, we switch concavity. Below that line, we're in this region here, so we're concave up. And above that line, we are concave down. So if we start here, we're gonna be concave up until we hit that line, that's gonna be an inflection point, and we switch to being concave down. If we start up here, we're just always concave down, increasing, but concave down, so it just looks up like that. All right, we'll come out, be concave up, hit this line, flip to being concave down, and then we'll go forward that way. Above that, we have the exact same situation. We have a line in the middle here where we're gonna switch concavity. Below that line, we are concave up. Above that line, we are concave down, but now we're decreasing. So if we start up here, we're concave down till we hit the line inflection point, concave up and forward that way. This will just be concave up the whole way. And that's the picture there. 
above that line, we are increasing and concave up. So we're just here and it just takes off up that way. So the sine of f tells us whether we're increasing or decreasing. The derivative of f tells us about the concavitus function, where it's going to be concave up or concave down. And that gives us a sketch of curves like this for our solutions to these equations. So they're always going to look similar to this. There's always going to be a turning point between any two of them solutions. That actually is Rolle's theorem from Calc 1. That I have two zeros here, so I have to have a critical point somewhere in between. That's where I'm going to switch concavity. And so these points that you get out of this are the critical points of the function f. And that will be where you have inflection points on these sketches of curves. So that's how concavity and the first derivative of the function f play into sketching out solutions to these autonomous equations.